Greetings to those that are watching this video. Most of you probably know about video games. And you also know that most video games have music tracks. Couldn't you imagine how boring some games would be if you were just wandering around in some no free, noise-free environment? This is why music is one of the most important things about video games, and probably only rivaled by gameplay and replay value. Video game music is usually used to invoke emotions. There are many different emotions video game music can invoke. I'm here to go over all of them. Please enjoy. Before you start a game, you are greeted with the game's title in big letters. And the hero either waving, going through a level, or so on. There's usually music in the background. This is either happy for generally happy games, serious for games focusing on seriousness, or creepy for horror games. This is done to pull in people that like the game. It's not good. It's not a good idea to put really happy music in a game with extreme amounts of violence, or some relatively creepy music for a game about puppies playing with kittens. This could drive away some people expecting the former but getting the latter. Title screen music is simple to create, but if you screw up, it could be deadly for your game. This is usually for the first few levels in the game. When this is used, you know the level isn't threatening. This is mostly used for happy games, like platformers. I really can't say anything else. It just seems too self-explanatory. Moving on. A good chunk of video games have mini-games. If you don't know what those are, they are shorter games within the game. They are commonly optional, with the exception of Mario Party, and games are nothing but a compilation of mini-games. Those exist. Similarly to most of the game, they have music. While mini-games are fun, they'd be boring without a small tune to play along with them. These songs are usually chaotic, fun, and bright, much like many mini-games. They also start suspenseful and unnerving, much like mini-games are such. Similarly to the title screen music, mini-game music has to fit with the mini-game it's representing. There are those times in video games where you're like, Hey look, a save point! And they're giving me a lot of supplies. Why has the music stopped? What's the random door placed at the end of- Oh no. That's right, it's BOSS TIME! Boss battles are much harder at battling than the countless weaker enemies you defeated. To reflect this, the music must be, must be more intense, more scary, more threatening. You have to know, the boss is much harder than the other enemies. It's also a common thing to give each boss their own theme, giving them their own level of threatening. Intense music. Intense music is when the game is warning you that something bad is near. You could be drowning. You could be followed by a powerful mutant. You could be in an almost erupting volcano. All of these have to be warned about with music. Sometimes intense music will grow faster and faster as the possible death gets closer and closer. This can also apply to time limits to get you to go through the level faster. Sometimes the abominations, disturbing plot, and horrifying atmosphere just isn't enough to make a horror game a horror game. Creepy music can be put into any game, as long as there's a creepy character or location. Music adds a lot to creepiness if it is done right. An easy way to do this is to make it slow or music box style. In horror games, creepy music will, on almost all occasions, replace the happy music, telling you that the game is going to get disturbing. After fighting the many bosses throughout the game, one more approaches. Everything beforehand leads up to this. This is the final boss. As the final boss is the most intense part, the music has to be the most intense music. You need to know that this boss is the most threatening of them all. 
and it gets you ready to take it on. It makes you know that you have to defeat the final boss. It tells you that this is different between victory and defeat. Can you do it? The end. Ending music is almost always happy. Unless the game ended on a negative note. It's a great way to end a great game. The ending music is sometimes the best in the game, so it can excuse you jumping from your seat and dancing around. Sometimes it can invoke a bit of sadness because you know that the adventure has ended. Considering this is the last track many players will hear, it should be done very well because nobody wants to complete a game just to find out the crisis is a boring, low-note song that you'd yawn at. It's recommended to make this the best song in the game. Well, that's about it. Now you know the importance of video game music, and how it can invoke many emotions into the player. Music will always remain a great factor in video games, and, we can, and it can be done either well or badly. If you ever get into video game development, keep all of this in mind for the music. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to the next time I do something like this. Goodbye.